League Championship Series, the Kansas City Royals versus the New York Yankees, is brought to you by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers who invite you to see and drive Chevrolet's totally new six-passenger car, the new Chevrolet. By Texaco, makers of Haviland Super Premium, a motor oil designed to help keep down the cost of car maintenance. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. That's the helicopter shot of Yankee Stadium. The huge crowd now fully here. 57,000 people, maybe more. New York City, Yankee Stadium. Right now, let's bring in my two colleagues, Keith, Jack Keith Jackson and Reggie Jackson. And Keith, any final word quickly on this? How would you like to be Whitey Herzog tonight? Whitey Herzog, a former Yankee farmhand, never could make it to the big club, never had a chance to play here. But suddenly, here he is, managing a ball club that could beat the Yankees, possibly, and win the American League title. And you, Reggie? Kansas City apparently almost down and out. Played very loosely Sunday, almost with nothing to lose. I hope they continue on, try to make something out of it. Almost down and out, almost counted out. Don't count them out now. You've had that feeling before yourself, Reggie. Okay, that's the whole of the scene set. Now, we'll be back with the opening pitch in just one moment. All right, we're ready now for the opening pitch. And out there on the mound, Doc Ellis, Jim Wolford at the plate. Here's Keith Jacks. Jim Wolford, Al Collins, and George Brett, the top three men in the order for the Kansas City Royals. And Doc Ellis is on the mound. A 249 average for Jim Wolford. He's one for seven in the two games played in Kansas City. And you've got a two ball one strike count as we begin game number three this game in the view of many people so very very important because if the Yankees can win it it'll be nothing more than to split to claim the title that is fouled away into the upper deck out of play number 36 wearing the blue pinstripe of the Yankees. Really makes it tough Keith when you say. You can play 162 games and you can get down for a three game series to decide whether you're going to be the champion or not. Jim Wolford out of Kansas City, Missouri, a native son of Visalia, California, takes from the second baller right hander, Doc Ellis, ball two. So we have three ball, ball three it was, three and two now. And Doc Ellis loses. Jim Wolford walking the first man. Now, it is something that's been in everybody's mind since they moved into New York as to whether or not Doc Ellis would be able to keep Kansas City from running. Doc does not have a history of keeping runners particularly close to the base and it puts a great deal of pressure on the catcher and Thurman Munson had a couple of errors get away from him in Kansas City as the Royals got on base and did some running on him. Two balls and no strikes. The runner Wolford edges off first ball strike on Al Cowens. Al Cowens two for eight in the championship series of the two games at his home park Royal Stadium in Kansas City where they set new attendance marks at both games. Throw to first and Wolford is back waiting on deck. George Brett the American League batting champion. He will be the left-hander. Here goes Wolford. The pitch swung on and missed, and Wolford steals it easy. It's two and two on the batter, and now we've got a man at the far turn in scoring position. And he got a big, big jump on That's Doc Ellis. At the jump, Keith, which was big. And then Munson did something that he did not do Sunday night in Kansas City. Instead of the quick-release sidearm, he hesitated and threw overhand. That avoided the wild throw that he was guilty of on two occasions Sunday night. The now Yankees don't nobody. like him to throw side on. Right, nobody out now. Swing and a miss as Cowens chases. A curve ball and strikes out. Now you've got one out. And Wolford out there at second base. I think the guy right there on the camera, well, of course, that's Jimmy Wolford talking about Doc Ellis. 
for me, all season long, he was one of the toughest guys on their ball club. He's got an excellent singer, an excellent slider. And there's the man I call, if he was, if the line drive looked like a human being, it'd be George Brett. It's 353 feet to straightaway right, 310 down the right field line. And the pitch is inside and low to George Brett. One out, and Jim Wolford is on second base for Kansas City at the top of the first inning. We've got a great shot right here. We'll see if they're going to try any strategy, see where they're going to try to pitch George Brett. They've got first base open. Will they try to pitch to him, or will they try to walk him? He hits it into right center field, drops in for a base hit. Wolford turns to third. He'll come to score, and George Brett delivers. He is a hitting machine. That makes him five for eight on the series, the leading hitter in the series. He's now at 625. He had gone into that turn at bat four for seven. I think that kind of goes along with the kind of a year he had. He's a leading hitter in the league, the leading hitter in the in the series. That ball right there was a pretty good pitch by Doc Ellis. The ball was inside. Brett, a guy that makes a tremendous amount of contact, broke his bat, yet he still drove in a run. John Mayberry, only 13 home runs. He has not hit a home run in the new version of Yankee Stadium. The pitch is inside, and they'll try to jam it. Ellis will try to keep it inside, because when you got a guy as big as Mayberry up there with a stick in his hand, he have got to worry about it. Here's one thing here. I believe that pitch right there was just a show-me pitch. They're going to show him inside and stay away from him all night. Up the middle it goes. It should drop. It does, and here goes Brett around second, heading for third. Mayberry is on with a single to left center. So quickly the Royals are off and running. Obviously, they were not taken aback by the dismal start in the first game of this series, and just as obviously they're not worried about the Yankee Stadium confines here because during the course of the season, they won four and lost two against the Yankees right here. Al McRae. He's the next man to come to the plate, the designated hitter. So far, Hal McRae has not had a hit against Yankee pitching in the championship series. He's been on base one time from a walk, but you can see from his credentials on the season, you do not get careless with it. One out, two on. Mayberry at first, Brett at third, the pitch swung on and missed. Strike one. Watch the ball, Mac. Watch the ball, now. Here we see a first and third situation. Hal McRae, an excellent hitter, 332 on the year, a guy that makes a tremendous amount of contact. And they're in double play depth, the second baseman and the shortstop. They're almost going to give him the run. Hit high to the right side. Should be playable, the right fielder. He's got a good arm. He's got a good arm, Keith. We're Here's the back by Brett. And he's safe. And came in high, hooked his spikes on home plate, and could very easily have hurt himself. And I don't think that Maddox got a good push off from the outfield. Don't think he made a real good, strong throw. He's shown a better arm than that in the past. All right, look at it again. You're exactly right. Elliot Maddox made a disappointing throw. He's got a much better arm than that. The ball dribbled into the plate, as you saw it there, and so the run across the plate. Two to nothing, the Kansas City Royals top of the first. On the sacrifice fly by Hal McRae. Now coming to the plate, Tom Poquette. And Poquette standing at the plate looks very much like George Brett. Of course, there's a reason for that. It's a fellow named Charlie Lau, the hitting coach for the Royals. Pitch is inside, gets away from Munson. And the base runner advances to second. So now you've got Bases, second and third occupied. Keith, it looks like they've got a little work going out there in right field. Mayberry standing there on second, big guy. Billy Martin's got to be in a tough situation. He's got a tremendous amount of options. His best pitcher on the ball club the last five, six weeks of the season have been, has been Grant Jackson. Yet it's warrants for Doc Ellis to start because he's pitched so well over the season, the same way with Ed Bigger And they've got a guy in the, two guys in the bullpen, Kenny Holtzman and Doyle Alexander. Tom Poquette, one and one. If, if things don't work out well for his pitching staff, Keith Howard, he'll be second guess from here to Doomsday. Poquette, dangerous, with three runs batted in in the two games in Kansas City. He's two for six. Pulls it sharply down the right field line. Fair ball. 
Mayberry coming around third. Ball gets loose in right. And it'll be a close play at second. Throw is off the mark from Maddox. And Bouquet goes in on his tummy. As uh, Jordan Mayberry scores from second base. And Kansas City jumps on Doc Ellis for three runs. I think by now you realize why Poquette was named by the writers Rookie of the Year. Look at this in replay. Looking so much like George Brett, as Reggie Jackson has pointed out, just inside the foul line. A kid who was hitting at 338 until he crashed into the left field wall in Kansas City, suffered a broken cheekbone, was sidelined, had corrective surgery, came back, wound up at 302, would probably have hit much more had it not been for that accident. Here's the pitch now to Frank White, the Kansas City's second baseman. White in the championship series, one for six. Three runs are in. Breaking pitch got just enough of the corner. We got a call. It's one and one. Doc has had some bad breaks here in the first inning. Got a couple of broken bat hits. One and two. A couple of broken bat hits. And then, of course, the ball of Polk Kent hit. I thought he hit a good pitch. Ball inside, and he slapped it hard down the first baseline. Three and two to White. Frank pops it up on the right side. First baseman Chris Chambliss under it, down the line, makes the catch, and the inning is over. But Kansas City scores three runs on three base hits. And they take the lead three to nothing in the top of the first. As you look down on Yankee Stadium from a helicopter, a beautiful autumnal evening. Yankee Stadium is filled with what did you say, Howard? 57,000. Now the capacity because of new bleacher seats. That's correct. Just a few weeks back, George Steinbrenner, the colorful, flamboyant owner of the Yankees, together with a friend named Larry Fisher, put up their own loot to expand the new stadium. There had been certain unseated areas out in left center and right center field. They put in bleacher seats there, and so the capacity is now 57,000 feet. A ragged start for the Yankees, Keith. Ragged indeed. In fact, a little bit of a pickup from their dismal collapse of two nights ago. Dismal from their point of view, not Kansas City's. Top of the order for New York, Mickey Rivers, Roy White, and Thurman Munson. Mickey Rivers, two for nine in the championship series. He has been a catalyst for this New York ball club. Slides up the bat handle, and he gets George Brett moving in from third as Andy Hustler delivers his first pitch in championship play, and he misses ball one. But what a story this young man has been already and could be by midnight tonight. Just outside for ball two. Reggie, you've looked at him. You think if he can get the ball in the strike zone, he can be particularly difficult for New York. I definitely believe that, Keith. He's an uncomfortable kind of a pitcher, especially for left-handed hitters. He's a little bit wild. His ball moves back in on the hand. Right now, he's obviously concentrated about on Rivers because he's such the same way. Well, he went outside to get a two-ball count, came back inside with a fastball and got the corner. And that pitch there was moving inside. The ball was down. Andy Hauser is the kind of guy that I call uncomfortable and awkward to hit against. At two and one, he's outside. George Brett very short at third base because Mickey Rivers will do anything to get on that first base. A lot of people forget that in 74 he had the third best earned run average in the league 2.61 with KC 1-5 lost 6 ERA 2.89 not bad. But two calls. Three he's got extra two. stuff. He's got excellent stuff and he's throwing the ball hard right now. If he's on the night the Yankees are going to be in for a long evening. Well you know he's pumped up. Got to be. Uh, and he's throwing the ball hard. Do we have our jugs gun downstairs? <laughs> yes, we do. We'll be reporting the velocity early on in the game, then in the middle innings, and then in the late innings. Right around 88 miles an hour so far. Tap towards shortstop. Red leaves it go. Botex scoops throws to right. That's for you. He's amazing. Just amazing. On Rio Grass at Yankee Stadium, it's a base hit for Mickey Rivers. On the artificial turf, might well have been enough. The 
because or a of double the ball move. <laughs> much, yeah, that's right. They're much faster. Watch it again, folks. Good Going pitch. Outside. Good pitch. They had a good right. pitch. And a great play from Patek. And a super stretch from Mayberry. Nothing you can do about it. The man's quicker than instant coffee. <laughs> Rivers has stolen 43 bases. Came to New York from the California Angels in the deal that sent Bobby Bonds west. And now here is Roy White, the left fielder. Just a bluff. Strike one. One strike pitch to Roy White. Missed the bot. Throw to first. Safe. Almost had yes. Mickey Lennon. Good yes. throw. Oh. Little bit hairy. No question about it. Watch the play at first. He almost got caught leaning, but he's able to slide under the tag of John Mayberry on the snap throw from Buck Martini. The new Yankee Stadium. And it's really pretty. Looking right down from where War Wright would like to hit one. Left field bleachers. Outside and high. And it's now full count. Andy Hasler at White in the hole. 0-2. And, and now he's gone full with him. And no rivers will be sailing. Got to come in the strike zone right now. See the infield set in double play depth. Rivers can fly. There he goes. Pitch swung on and missed. Throw to second base. He's out. Super play. It Super was. Throw. That's the right word. That's a fair you characterization. Can be this nothing but short. Up. You can be nothing short of Super to get Rivers. The fastest man in our league. I may be wrong. I don't know anyone else. But look at the perfect throw, perfect execution. Look at Martinez get rid of the ball. Maybe he's only hitting 220, but this is what counts. You get Rivers off the base, and you've done a tremendous job for your ball club. Also typical of the way Billy Martin trails. Tra uh, uh, leads, trailing three to nothing. He sends the man on the three and two pitch. Aggressiveness. Now the pitch to Thurman Munson. And that many feel is a prime candidate for the most valuable player award in 1976 in the American League with a 302 average and 105 runs batted in. Big guy, 5'11", 195. Swings and fouls it at the plate, and it's one and one. I think one thing that goes along with being in consideration for the most valuable player he's had this year on a winning ball club. When you play on a winning ball club, every team comes after you. They save their good pitches for you to face, and ball players follow the paper. They know that Munson has had the kind of a year that qualifies him to be in the running to be a most valuable player. Comments from Reggie Jackson of the Baltimore Orioles. The appeal and lost and lost. It's one and two. You had mentioned earlier, Keith, about Haster being in a rut, having some problems while he was while he was with California. You get with the, the same people all the time, and you get in a mental rut. And you fellas know, being around sports 20, 30 years, I don't want to say too much longer. We've been, we've <laughs> but, been in a mental rut for you, 20 years. You know what, a, what the, the mental aspect of the game is. And the uplift of being with Kansas City has definitely helped us. Now. Ball is hit to the right side. Pocket backing up, makes the play. And the Yankees are gone. River single. But the Yankees score no run on the base hit. Leave nobody after one complete inning. Kansas City three, New York nothing. That's a kind of fisheye view of Yankee Stadium as it is today. The great monuments used to be out on the field at the back of center field. Once Bobby Mercer started running around the monuments to try and find the baseball against an inside the park home run. That can't happen anymore. There's Doc Ellis. Here's Keith Jackson. Doc ready to pitch to Fred Patek. And he's in with a strike. Buck Martini is on deck and will go back to the top of the Kansas City order for Jim Wolford as the Royals go to bat at the top of the second inning, leading by a score of three nothing at Yankee Stadium series even at one win each and Ellis right in the pipe again two strikes good slider very good slider <laughs> thanks Reggie for what's that Reggie thanks for going Yanks don't you wish it <laughs> two strike pitch is high to Fred Patek and it's worth repeating he's only 5'4 at 140 pounds he does his thing brilliantly. Play shortstop for Kansas City. You see, he's 
two for seven. He hits that to the right side. Chris Chambliss makes the play. Doc Evans covers and they get Pate. Nicely done by Doc. Very nicely done by Doc. Nicely done by Chris, too. Watching Ellis pitch to Pate. I told on Sunday night of Pate's depression over the death of his closest friend, Bob Moose, the young, the 29 year old Pittsburgh reliever. Well, Doc Ellis knows Bob Moose, too. They were together, and Doc is going to Bob's funeral when it takes place. Along with Fred, of course. Keith? Buck Martinez, the Kansas City catcher at the plate. He has only one hit in the first two games, but he delivered two runs with that base hit in Kansas City three-run eighth inning Sunday night. Really locked the game for them, and Doc Ellis has the slider in for strike one call. One there out, you, nobody on. There you see the breaking ball. You don't see quite as much movement from your catcher for location, whether the ball will be inside or outside from the hitter. When, a, when your pitcher's going to throw the breaking ball, he, there's movement when there's a fastball. There's another breaking ball. He's got his slider, and he's sticking with it tonight. He Two got hurt with him. the fastball in the first inning. Two strikes now on Buck Martinez. There was a note about uh, Buck Martinez having the weakest arm of the Kansas City catching core. Didn't look like it when he threw out Rivers, did it? Not to me. Got him looking. Two gone for Kansas City in the top of the second inning. We'll go back now to the top of the order is Doc Ellis. You see his championship series record. Spectators are supposed to sit in the stands, Buck. <laughs> not supposed to be at the plate. <laughs> but it happens to everybody. I ought to know I've struck out a hundred times about the last 40 years I've ever played. <laughs> Jim Wolford hits it up the middle. Fred Stanley cuts it behind second base and throws it out. Kansas City goes quiet. In the top of the second inning. As they are retired in order by Doc Ellis coming up for New York. Vanilla, Champlis, and Nettles are scored after one and a half. Three nothing Royal. Judging by the way the Yankees are currently going, trailing three to nothing as we go into the bottom half of the second, the Yankees really do. There are the Yankee what legends. Sign? And our that own. sign? Are you going to hit clean up for the Yankees? I think I may have to. <laughs> Keith? Lou Pinella, the designated hitter, number four man of the order, leads it off for New York in the bottom of the second inning to be followed by Chris Champlis and Greg Nettles, the American League home run champion. There's some muscle at the plate. As Andy Hassler, 24-year-old left-hander for Kansas City, delivers inside to Pinella for ball one. I'll tell you, Pinella has owned Hassler. He's nine out of 20 against him in his career. Get over the pitcher's glove. Patek cuts it behind second. Great play. Yes, by great play. Patek. Yes, great play. Great athletic ability shown right there. Something that I could never do. I'd have got stumbled and caught up in my feet and fell down three times Reggie, between there and first what's base. What's so great about him is he's so close to the ground, Patek. He scoops those things up like a vacuum cleaner. Like a man named Scooter. <laughs> Scooter is in the next book. Reggie Jackson carefully playing politics with the great ones of the past. <laughs> first baseman Chris Shambliss up there right now. He's at 383 against Kansas City during this past season and Hessler is again a little wide for ball one. I always like to make note of the fact that he has such an exaggerated close stance and there's Andy Hassler. Pulls it Ooh, toward the second good. baseman White. White gets in by three yards and you've got two out. So after that opening inning explosion by Kansas City it's been relatively quiet. Here's another guy with a left handed swing who can reach what is called in baseball the short porch in Yankee Stadium. Greg Reggie Reynolds. Greg is an interesting case. Last year and the year before he hit left handers with extreme effectiveness for left handed hitter. This year almost helpless against him. That shows up in the statistics Howard. There's no question about it. However you get a guy like Nettles and as you well know being in sports he's always a threat he's led the league in home runs consequently they pitch him a little bit tougher than they do the next guy upstairs two balls and no strikes will be I think probably starting to look at more breaking stuff now from Hassler as he gets a little looser and the confidence gets going but so far it's been primarily hard stuff.
right, let's take a quick look. It's nine o'clock at what's happened. First game, Catfish Hunter dominant. Yankees four to one. Roy White key hit, clinching double in the ninth inning. Second game, Royals seven to four, now leading three to nothing. Se Excuse me, the second game was seven to three. Correction, now leading three to nothing. We are in the bottom half of the second inning. Nettles up at a three-one count. Yeah. Check this swing. Check at the third base umpire. He shakes his head. Boy, and Greg Nettles is on. That's the Later first walk of the ball game issued by Andy Hassler. Now the batter for New York, Elliot Maddox, the right fielder, one for four in the series. Didn't play Sunday. Played Saturday and got his base hit there. With two out. Greg Nettles on first base. Two balls, no strike. And Maddox takes strike call. So it's two and one. The interesting thing about Hasla is that while a number of Yankees have hit him for good percentage, he has never allowed a home run to any player on the Yankee active roster. Very interesting, but you never know. They tell us that on the Jugs radar gun that Andy Hasler's throwing 91 miles an hour and that's a foul by Maddox at the plate. The count goes even 2-2 two, two with two out. Yeah. Yes, Struck him did. up. And so the Yankees come up empty in the bottom of the second inning. Cowan's Brett and Mayberry coming up top of the third for Kansas City. The Royals lead it three to nothing. That's New York City. It's in trouble. But there it is. You better believe the view from the ABC helicopter, the George Washington Bridge in the background. Third inning action coming up, and here is Keith Aroos. Al Cowens, number two man in the order, leads it off to be followed by George Brett and John Mayberry. Cowens struck out swinging in his first trip to the plate tonight in the first inning. Al struck out 50 times during the past season and hitting 265 against the American League pitching caps it over the mound might get through nope Randolph can't get much on the pitch and Collins with good speed is aboard and Al Cowan stole 26 bases. Uh, let's see stole 23 bases in 1976 so he's a threat to run with George Brett coming to the plate George not the only hitter in the family there's the on deck batter big John Mayberry brother Kenny Brett pitcher in the big leagues, playing winner ball in Puerto Rico, outfield and first base. Hits it further than George. Pitch to George outside. It's now full. Three and two. That time Cowens did not make a move. Three and two. Cowens will be running. He's got a throw in the strike zone. Brett will be swinging. And we'll see a little action. Action Keith Jackson. Here goes Cowens. Pitch hit over the middle. Second baseman Randolph. Off the back. Couldn't have been any more perfect if you hit it with a fungo, if you hit it with a batting practice bat, an infield practice bat, right at him. Cowens takes off, he gets a real good jump, but there's nothing he can do about it. Ball hit right at the back, Randolph gets out of the way, and a great throw to stretch by Campbell. Now the bases are clean, and two are out, and the batter is John Mayberry. I'll say it again, it's 310 down the line and right, 353 straight away right, 385 up the right alley. Pitch is on the outside corner to John Mayberry for a call strike. And that's the way you must pitch. In this stadium, you better. Mayberry with a single in his first at bat tonight. He did hit the ball out to left field his first time up, Keith. You can see we've got a shift on Mayberry right now. The shortstop behind second base. The third baseman at shortstop. The second baseman in right field. 1-1 one, one pitch hit right past Doc Ellis. Fielded by the shortstop. And he throws him out. Fred Stanley with plenty on the throw to get in by a good stride. And so Kansas City goes in order. And at the end of two and a half innings of play, Kansas City three, Yankees nothing. This picture bespeaks the old Rogers and Hart classic. I'll take Manhattan. The Bronx and Staten Island too. That's the scene set right here and now. Reggie Jackson, Keith Jackson, yours truly, Howard Cosell, and Skunts within that crowded arena. Keith?
Andy Hassler pitches. Strike call to the leadoff man for the Yankees here in the bottom of the third inning. Willie Randolph, the second baseman. Fred Stander, the shortstop, will follow. Then back to the top of the order for Mickey Rivers. Two balls and one strike to count. On Randolph, leading off for the Yankees, bottom of the third. Kansas City leading 3-0. Cut to the shortstop. Freddy Potek, long throw, and he gets him. Freddy Potek. With he quickness. A, five foot four. The same scout that signed him signed a man named Willie Stargell. Stargell's about 6'4", about 225. <laughs> you get, can't say that guy's prejudiced, that's for sure. And then he signs <laughs> the other guy that's five foot four. The guy's name is Bob Zuck. He signed Reggie Jackson, too. He should be, <laughs> should have a future himself. He? He's got a chance, doesn't he? Yeah. He only made one mistake. <laughs> I'm in the booth. <laughs> it's one thing you like about a guy like Stanley. He knows he's not a power hitter. He knows he's not a home run hitter. He tries to do the things that he can do best. You see him right there taking the count full. The count goes to three and two now. Most hitters would have been swinging at that pitch, but Fred knows his job Get on base. Slap the ball anywhere he can. Be an asset to your ball club whenever possible. Three and two pitch. Popped up. Patek turns. Comes back. Makes the catch. Two down. How quick Patek is. Now he turned completely around as he started toward left, circled back toward center, and in short center made the play. Here comes Mickey Rivers. Keith got the Yankees' only hit thus far in the game. That. A slow bounder to Freddie Potak, and he beat it out. They've only hit the ball out in the infield once, haven't they? High pop, maybe play it. Buck Martinez, George Brett, Brett calls. Yankees are gone. Bottom of the third inning. So, after three innings of play, the totals: Kansas City, three runs, four hits, and no errors. The Yankees, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Full house at Yankee Stadium. We move now. Kansas City sends to the plate. Al McRae, the designated hitter, Tom Poquette, and Frank Wyatt. Designated hitter, in case you don't know, just simply means the man is designated as the hitter. The pitcher is no longer a batter or a participant in the batting order in the American League. Woo. And hit him. Al McRae is on. Well, he was 0 for 11, but he's on base now, and that's what counts. Went a whole lot of steam on it. He took it on his shoulder, looked like. Just nipped it. Looks like it either might have been a backup breaking ball that didn't break or a fastball that got away again side. A situation like that, he might see the hitter leaning over the plate and might want him to get off the plate, might want to establish a little authority. Sometimes those things happen. Al McCray now leads off first base. And the batter is Tom Boquette. McCray is running and the throw is out. An outstanding throw and an outstanding play from Munson. You say he's going to be challenging for the most valuable player award. You don't keep slapping his face time after time. You're going to get back right. once in a while. Let's look at it again. McCray did not get the great jump. And Munson threw overhand and surely the ball there in plenty of time. Howard Munson's got the quickest release of anybody I've seen in the big leagues. Of course, I haven't seen the big man over at Cincinnati get rid of it very much, but he's Munson is truly super. Bench is just marvelous. A superb defensive catch. Count on Tom Poquette now. Two strikes. One out, and the base is empty. Back three call. No, very quickly. Two gone. Poquette didn't like it. Yes, didn't but like that it. was a pitch. I but didn't that's like it. Pitch. Ellis is he either oh, thought it was high or outside. You really can't tell from up here. But Poquette didn't like it. The young fella, you almost have to take into consideration when a young guy is he was trying to go away, and I guess he thought it was way because it had good height. The ball had good height. I imagine he thought the ball was outside. White one for four against Doc Ellis. And excuse me, swing. Third baseman Nettles has trouble getting it out of the glove, but still gets it. And so Kansas City is gone. In the top of the fourth inning, but the Royals have the lead over the New York Yankees in the third game of the championship series, 3-0. That's the Empire State Building. Shot taken from the ABC helicopter. Just another manifestation of what New York City is all about. 
on this the opening night of the American League Championship Series game number three bottom of the fourth inning and the Yankees trailing the Royals three to nothing. Roy White, Thurman Munson, Lou Pinello to New York here in the bottom of the fourth. Andy Hassler working for the one hitter at a three nothing lead and he gets strike one called on Roy White. Three for nine and two runs batted in in the series. The Yankee left fielder. Ready for attack at shortstop. Good scoop by Mayberry at first base and Bill Haller with a call. That's as you know, Reggie, that's the one thing Mayberry can really do at first. He's as good as anybody at scooping out the low one. He's got good hands, and I don't know if we can see it here or not. Here we see the pitch from, from Hassler. The great play by Patek showing his ever great range. The position of the umpire right in on the play to get a good look at it. One down, the designated hitter for the Yankees. Lou Fanella, uh, excuse me, Thurman Munson, and then Fanella moving into the on deck circle. Lou Fanella, who has just banged away at Kansas City all season, waiting in the on deck to see what Munson can do. Thurman with a fly ball to the right fielder, his first time up. There's Lou. He's moved around some, including Kansas City in his stops and California. Here's the big man, Thurman Munson, three for ten and one run batted in. Coming into the ball game, hits it hard toward Patek to shortstop. Patek's throw inside of the bag, but Mayberry again, he's six four, so he can cover a lot of territory over there. Hasla has them hitting consistently now on the ground. And furthermore, as Lou Pinella comes up, you're right, he was there at the birth of this ball club, Keith, 1969. Now in their eighth year, it's a great story, an analogy to the Mets when they won everything in 69. And reminder, they're not booing, they're calling them Lou. Now, Kansas City, ever since 1971, an expansion ball club is fifth in total victories in the American League. Vanilla hits it toward Brett at third, fair ball. Lou almost falling down, turning around first base, will hold there. Excellent play right there by Wolford. Excellent play by Wolford. Somebody came out of the stands trying to get a hold of the ball as it came down the line. Too. He stayed right with it. You see George Bett try to backhand this ball. It's a pretty good pitch by House, and the ball gets by him, goes all the way down the right field, and some problems with the fans. You see the umpire signal that it would be a ground rule double. Wolford stays with the ball, gets away from the fan, makes the throw, and he holds Pinella to a single. Now we'll have a little argument. But I got a feeling that the man in the red coat will win. Well, they're going to advance Pinella to second base. Here's Whitey Herzog coming out to discuss it as to whether or not Pinella uh, should be allowed to go to second base. There obviously, was interference. The umpire had called it and signaled it before it ever happened. He may have signaled a little, so, little too soon. Uh, you got to give Wolford credit for sticking with the ball and holding Lou. Uh, to a single. I agree with that, Reggie. And obviously it was an unthinking youngster who went out there. But still you have to wonder about the kind of mentality that perpetrates that kind of act. Well, you can give Fanella a ground rule double. Yes, you can. With two out. Here is Chris Chambliss. As we have stated earlier, Keith, you said once he gets rolling, he's going to be tough. And he looks like he's starting to find a groove. The only time that Hasner has been in trouble is when there have been two outs. Strike on the outside corner to Shambliss. Now watch Vanella as he makes the turn at first. He started stumbling before he got to the bag. I thought he might have pulled a muscle or something. That's probably the biggest reason, one of the reasons he didn't go to second base. And maybe that's why the umpire signaled that he was going to get a double anyway. One strike count on Shambliss. As Pinella leads off second, the ball is hit deep to right. Look we'll at going back. Goodbye. Goodbye. Home run, Chris Shambliss. We said Saturday, we said Sunday, this man could hit left handed pitch. He went into tonight's contest with five out of nine. Championship Series percentage of 556. He had a big year. 
one of the many trade acquisitions in the current Yankee regime. Just a good, solid ball. The home runs are so destructive. As you, anybody you watch the game today, here's a home run ball right down the middle, and Chandler gets the fat of the bat on it. Potek just doing his job, going after it, got no chance. The fans got a souvenir. And here's the American League home run champ. I was stating earlier, you see the destruction, the excitement that home runs provide. You saw what happened over today in Cincinnati. George Foster, Johnny Bench, and the momentum suddenly shifted over to Cincinnati. Maybe the same thing will happen here. We said we're in New York. We said we're in an exciting town. You see the crowd come alive all because of a home run. All the trouble for Andy Hassler after two were out. Now a three to two ball game, the third home run of the season for Shambliss against Kansas City pitching. What you had mentioned about earlier, Howard, you had mentioned that there's only one city like New York, there's only one town like it. Well, Hassler now, the inexperience, will it affect them with the crowd starting to get excited being in the town of New York? All one count on Greg Nettle. Foul, one and one. That fouled off the ankle. Ouch. Brader comes out to check see if Greg Nettles is all right. By the way, 13 of Chambliss's 17 home runs on the season came off southpaw. So there is vivid evidence of how that man hits left hand. One and one pitch. Right call, one and two. No slider. There's, there's Chris. But left-handed hitters like that are few and far between. And so Gabe Paul, the president of the Yankees, has spent much of the last half of this season seeking a right-handed hitter. Two and two as Hester's high and away. To combat the Yankees' season-long relative ineffectiveness against lefties, Keith. And yet they're 42 and 32 on the season against Southpaw. 2-2 pitch. Oh, close. Well, he may have been a little shaken by the home run ball, and uh, I guess it's only natural if you are. After the Nettles Chandler hits a home run, you then run into the American League home run champ. Now what do you do? Three and two. Strike him out, I guess. That's it. <laughs> That's what he did, but New York strikes back. They score two times on Chris Chambliss. Home run. Score now at the end of four. Three two Kansas City. There's the tip of Manhattan Island. And as you move upward to the left of your screen those two giant buildings the World Trade Center down there in lower Manhattan the financial center of the entire world and the legal center too. Resetting this game, we're going into the top of the fifth. Suddenly a one-run ball game. The Royals burst off with three in the first. The Yankees have just, with two outs, seen Pinella double, and then a home run by Chris Chambliss. Andy Hassler, the starter, still on the mound for the Royals, and Doc Ellis, the starter, still on the mound for the Yanks. Here's Keith Jacks. Brett Patek, Buck Martinez, and Jim Wolford for Kansas City against Doc Ellis. Back called, and Doc looks like he's getting on to his game. He's got his breaking ball working real well. Brady Patek is used to leading off innings, that's for sure. Get it up the middle, and it's got just enough on it to wiggle into center field. Single for the Kansas City shortstop. And it's evident because he's got a 430 on base percentage leading off innings in 1976. And we'll see Buck Martinez. Now, will we see a bunt? Will we see him advance the runner over? Will we see a little strategy? I don't know what we're going to see, but I know this. Just coming into our booth, and it's an honor to have one of America's most distinguished citizens. We'll talk to him in a minute. The Secretary of State, one of America's number one sports fans, Dr. Henry Kissinger. But back to the flow of the game. Token throw to first by Doc Ellis. Chris Chandler's covering to keep Patek close. Patek, the leading base stealer for Kansas City on the past season. He Goal 51 was caught 15 times. Pitch to Martinez, no indication of butt. Ellis is high, ball one. 
Patek off. There he goes. Pitch swung on and missed. Throw. Beeping a little bit for the second base umpire, Art France, but he's gone. I, I don't know if he got it. He got a great jump, 51 steals, and only caught 15 times. Did he touch him on the hat? Is he safe? I couldn't see it from there. <laughs> I couldn't see it from there. The Mighty tension of a playoff it. game. Look at this. Whitey didn't like it a bit. Hold your tempo, Whitey. No time to leave this game. They're going to need you. Well, it's almost like it comes down from the top. Uh, you've almost got to let a guy blow off the steam because the heat of a pennant race. Let's well, I know he hit him with a right hand coming over, but I don't know about the one with the ball. Great release from Munson. He got him. Puts that to the know. bag yet. No question. Yeah, yeah, Good call. Him. Looks like he tugged him on his left arm. End of argument. Sit, settle down, Whitey. You already had a tussle with a sports writer in the clubhouse before the game. Hold yourself together, learn new moves. Now there's Billy. What's the problem, Bill? Well, he's taking on an old timer and a tough customer. It's and Bill Haller over there at first base. That's right. 16 years, the senior operator in the American League in his capacity on this team at least. Yankee bullpen, Grant Jackson, the southpaw. Dick Tidrow, the right-hander, working for the Yankees. And Tidrow has been the right-handed stalwart of the bullpen. Now Buck Martinez, a two-and-one. Hits it to Willie Randolph. It's second, Randolph throws it out. Two gone. And they've got some momentum going. We'll see if they can keep it going. Here's another of those speedster pests who's been troublesome to the Yankees all season long. Hit Pedlin 300 against them. Stole five out of five times. Young Jim Walton. One and two pitch now. Wolford hits it to right center. Mickey Rivers fades back, makes the catch. Kansas City is gone. We had a couple of arguments, some excitement, but no scoring. After four and a half, Kansas City three, New York two. There are, of course, Secret Service men behind us, as you can see, but here is one of the top sports fans I've ever known in Govan. I remember you were here opening day when the Yankees beat the Twins, Mr. Secretary. No, I wasn't here on opening day. I was here on July 4th. You were also here opening day with Nancy, though you don't presently remember. You've had too many travels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. And Nancy was here as she is tonight. Uh, I, I asked you in Washington, we're about to go back to play, sir. Whom you would have picked, Lewis or Dempsey, both were there at the time, and Lewis uh, Dempsey saved you by saying, Lewis, who's going to win this game? I hope the Yankees. I've been a Yankee fan all my life. Thank you very much, sir. It's an honor to have you here. Good to be here. Thank you. You were here opening. No, I didn't. Elliot Maddox now. Willie Randolph and Fred Stanley, the bottom third of the Yankee batting order. And Andy Hassler out on the mound for Kansas City with a three hitter going in a one run ball game. Kansas City leading New York 3 2 as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. And it's ball one. Kissinger is still with us. He has now admitted that he was here opening day. When Oscar Gamble hit an upper deck home run as the Yankees came from behind to win it. Elliot Maddox grounds it to Freddie Patek. Freddie's throw high, but he got him. In fact, it was relatively easy. As Maddox, I think, shows some of the problems that goes with that uh, sore leg. Reggie? Well, there's no question about it. Uh, the way things are rolling right now, they're definitely setting the stage for some exciting baseball. We've got a 1-1 one -one tie in the series. We've got a 3-2 ball game in the bottom of the fifth inning, and it's going to get hairy as we get a little closer to that final out. And here's Willie Randolph, Keith. Randolph grounded out to shortstop. First time up. Looks, it's high. Ball one, 8 p.m. Preempting the Bionic Woman, the first new Wonder Woman special of the year. Oh, oh, that ought to be exciting. Beauty contest, Nazi agents, all that kind of stuff. Two balls and no strikes now to Willie Randolph at 9 p.m. tomorrow night. One of my favorites, Beretta. And then at 10 p.m. tomorrow night, Charlie's Angels as they go after a psychopathic killer and 
Gamble some with their pretty necks. One night on ABC. Andy Hessler now has gone to three balls and no strikes to Willie Randolph. The only time Willie has been on base so far in the championship series, he walked on Sunday night in Kansas City. Ball game tomorrow, 3 p.m. between the Yankees and Kansas City from Yankee Stadium Eastern Time. Now it's three and one to Willie. One thing that has really helped Andy Hassler tonight is he has not allowed a leadoff hitter to get on base ever since Mickey Rivers did it. The only thing that's hurt him is the home run pitch. He's pitched well ever since. Well, he loses Randolph. He does. The man was 37 stolen bases. The Yankees have got to start trying to put some pressure back on the Royals. The Royals have been the aggressors the last couple of days, Sunday and Tuesday. Now it's the New York shortstop. Ninth man of the batting order, Fred Stanley. Popped out to the short first time up. He's 0 for 1. Randolph edging off first. Top of the order, Mickey Rivers into the on-deck circle for New York. And a throw to first. Just walked two in the ball game. Goes hard to first. Elston Howard, Yankee first base coach, claims to Bill Haller. Wanted a balk ball, didn't get it. Well, I'm sure they're trying to get a balk situation here or a balk mover. And even if they don't, they just like Mr. Hassler to think about it. They would like the umpire to think about it to see if they can get a little psychological advantage. Waiting on deck. Top of the order for New York, Mickey Rivers. He can fly. Little speed out there on the bases, too, and Mr. Randolph, number you 30. To, you want to keep this guy off base here right now. He's got to make a pitch. Give him the opportunity to swing the bat. You don't want Rivers up there because so many things can happen with Rivers on base because he runs so well. <laughs> the situation, as I said before, as Howard mentioned about the ball move, the left-hander takes his, his lead leg, his right leg, and takes it behind his left leg when he starts to pitch it can be a balk but if he does like that Randolph running pitch fouled away if he takes that leg moves it back past his his left leg his, if he takes his right leg let's get this straight if he takes his right leg picks it up and goes back past his left knee he must come to the plate he can pick his leg up and not bring it back near his left knee set it back down and now he can go to first base or he can go to home. But once he picks that leg up and goes back behind there like that, he's got to go to home. Ball hit to the right side by Stanley. Randolph easily to second base. Play made by John Mayberry. Stanley is out. Two gone now for New York. But they do have Randolph at the turn and Mickey Rivers, the top of the order, coming up. But as the old saw would have it, Stanley did his thing. He did what he had to do. He hit behind the run. Just like a bunt. Things that do not go down in the scoring book. Things that don't go in the scoring column. Advance the runner in the scoring position. And like we saw today with Cincinnati, with Griffey up. When these guys that can fly make contact, all kinds of things can happen. Mickey Rivers with an infield single in two trips to the plate tonight. Hassler is low. What you saw Griffey do today was exactly what K.C. Stengel taught his players year in and year out. Hit down on it. Chop out. Get How that it, run in. It comes to the point where you realize what your abilities and what your capacities are. Rivers, make contact, slap that ball, and run. Get toward the Use right side. Speed. Frank White throws him out. Yankees threaten, but can't break through. So the score continues after five. Royals three, Yankees two. We'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local station. Tomorrow afternoon at three, right here in Yankee Stadium, it'll be game number four of the American League Championship Series between Kansas City and New York. The scheduled pitchers are Catfish Hunter for the Yankees and Larry Gura for the Kansas City Royals, the two people who squared off in the opening game. Catfish and Larry Gura. Whitey Herzog will use every left-hander he's got. He's not going to have to go with a right-hander for a starter in this ballpark. That's the battle plan. Larry Gura, the surprise pitcher in the opener, right. reminded Reggie Jackson of 1929 when Howard Emke 
was picked by Connie Mack against the Cubs. And Lefty Grove and George Earnshaw will bypass. Reggie and I were there. And I, <laughs> I'd also like to say, too, that if they hadn't got those two unearned runs in the first inning, they may still be pitching. Fouled away by Al Cowens, leading off for Kansas City. Top of the sixth inning with the Royals leading by a score of 3 2 against Doc Ellis, George Brett on deck, and John Mayberry, the third man. I'd sure like to say that Doc Ellis has sure settled down ever since that yeah, first yeah. inning. He's Which thrown up goose strong. eggs ever okay. since the first inning. Outstanding sinker ball pitcher, Doc Ellis. Greg Nettles falls down, up throwing, gets in. Nice play. Yes, a great play. He's been doing it all year, Keith, all year long. Golden Glove candidate. I think this goes to show you that you see some outstanding plays in the series here. See the championship series and you see championship plays. It brings the best out of ball players, makes them rise to the occasion. Look at that play. Shades of Brooks Robinson in 1970. Al Fitzmore is now throwing in the Kansas City bullpen as George Brett comes to the plate for Kansas City. He singled and scored and hit into a double play. Just low, ball one. Doc Ellis with 12 years in the Pittsburgh Pirate organization before being traded to the Yankees. It's in the right for a base hit for George Brett. He's two for three. What is he hitting? 700. <laughs> Coming into the ball game, he was four for seven. He's two for three tonight. So, give you an idea how effective Six he's been. Six for ten. That's right. Not quite 700, but enough to be troublesome. John <laughs> Mayberry now, who is not hitting terribly well this whole season, but still represents enormous power at the plate. One out for Kansas City. And George Brett on first. Pulled to the right side. Shemley steps on the back at first. Throws to second. And they've got Brett hung up. And they tag him up. And the inning is over. Now that's a lurid play. That's a far cry from the Yankee defensive collapse of Sunday night. That's playing the way Reggie Jackson likes to see it. Score 3-2 after five and a half Kansas City. We're awaiting the beginning of the bottom half of the sixth inning. And in our booth at the moment, another great name, the man who opened our show singing Autumn in New York to the scenes, the familiar landmarks of New York City, Mr. Frank Sinatra, his lovely wife Barbara here with him. And we will be talking with him briefly without interrupting the flow of the game. Roy White up now, Keith Jackson taking over. Thurman Munson on deck and Lou Pinella third scheduled hitter three two ball game bottom of the sixth inning Andy Hessler touch he, for three hits he's walked two and he struck out three they've got to get something going now Keith things are moving along pretty good and as soon as Hassler starts to fall then he's going to get some relief help in there ball two outside look for it from a man Mr. Consistency he's been with the Yankees for 12 years the dean of the Yankees Roy White Full count now on the Yankee left fielder leading off here at the bottom of the sixth inning. Roy White, three and two. That's the loser, then. All right, now you can look for immediate action, in, and they're getting up now in the Kansas City bullpen. As we pointed out, it's a game of accumulating tensions, and we have a one-run ball game. You're getting down the late innings of a championship game. Neither manager wants to let this game suddenly explode out of his hands. Reggie? Well, this is the first time that the, that the Yankees have gotten a runner on base with nobody else since Rivers got on. Will we see Thurman Munson Buck try to advance the runner over? When you're in the home ballpark, you usually see the manager try to play for a tie because remember, being being in the home ballpark, the home team always has the last at bat. There we see Marty Pat warming up the right-hander, number 33, and on the right of the screen, Tommy Hall. Go ahead, Keith. Thurman Munson, the big gun for the Yankees, is at the plate. Gets it to the right side, going to the right corner. It is in there. That's Thurman Munson. 
Roy White held at third. Munson goes in standing with a double. Nobody out. Yankees have base runners at third and at second as Munson double. There you see it. He stuck with Munson. Munson, he let him go on, swing the bat. Berman tried to hit the ball to right field to make sure that he would advance the runner. If he winds up getting a base hit, fine. If he doesn't, then he gets the runner over in their scoring position. Exactly Fire right. Martin and Fire Thurman Munson. Exactly right, Reggie. And the thing is about Munson that he's done it all year long with consistency. The thing is, he has developed a superior ability to go with the pitch. Outside to right field, thrown low and inside, he'll kill you. Give him the high pitch, he can hit it out. Again, the fact that he does not hit the ball to left field. If he does, we've got a chance to hit into a double play. And it's 387 feet and 430 feet out in left field. Minimizes your chances for advancing the runner and for getting the base hit. We now have a new pitcher for the Kansas City Royals, Marty Patton, coming on in relief of Andy Hassler. And the book on Hassler, five innings, two earned runs, six hits, struck out three, and he walked three. So the big left-hander cannot go all the way as New York now with nobody out. Base runners at third and at second, and Marty Patton comes on in relief. That's four hits for uh, Andy Hassler. Marty Patton. Lou Pinella now has been pulled by Billy Martin, and he sends Carlos May to the plate. May has functioned as the other designated hitter for the Yankees in 1976. So it is Carlos May, pinch hitting for New York now. Don't load White him up. Leads off at third, Thurman Munson at second, and Carlos May will be on first as they will intentionally pass him. He's going to load him up here, Keith, to come out with the no-out situation to score still three to two and see if make sure that he still has a force at any base. Well they've got some dynamite waiting in the on deck circle that's Chris Shambliss who's already hit a two run shot for a home run tonight put New York back in the ball game at three two and it could well be that Whitey Herzog will make another decision to bring a left hander out of the bullpen. Tom Hall now will be summoned from the bullpen as Marty Patton comes in intentionally walks Carlos May to load the bases for the New York Yankees. Nobody out. Well, we've got a timeout. Let us take this break. Tom Hall now in relief of Marty Patton, who in turn relieved Andy Hassler. He's one and one on the year with one save. He has not pitched much. He was bought from the New York Mets this season back in May. Right. I knew him at the Mets very well. And uh, his, the scouting report on Hall is that he has trouble with his control and his curveball is his best pitch but has trouble throwing it for strikes. If this be true and proves out, then they got real trouble with the bases filled. Roy White is over at third base. White walked to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning for New York. Thurman Munson is at second. He doubled to move White to third. And then Lou Pinella was pulled. Carlos May sent in on the pitching change. He was passed intentionally. And now we've got Tom Hall, left-hander on the mound for Kansas City to deal with Chris Chambliss. His longest turn for Kansas City, three and two-thirds innings. Back in June, Tom has not pitched a whole lot. 1976. Nobody out. Bases full of Yankees. One and two the count on Chambers. Kansas City leading 3-2. Tap to the right side. Frank White with it. Goes to second one. Run scores to third and runs all they can. As May goes in standing to block the play at second base on Freddie Fontek. He gets the job done. You don't need a base hit. You don't need a home run. You don't Either a fly ball or a ground ball. You Just tap over ball. there. You watch now as uh, May, who is bigger than Patek, goes in standing, and Freddie has no chance right here. So the run scores, and we've got a tie ball game at 3 3. Munson now at third base. Chris Shepless on the fielder's choice is at first base. Second is open. And your batter is the American League home run champion, Greg Nettle. It's going to have to get real tough here right now. Greg Nettles is probably the guy in the league with the best fly ball swing, in, in at least in the American League. He can really get the ball in the air. Consequently, 32 home runs. All he needs is a fly ball right now, even a ground ball, to get the runner home. Put this team ahead. One out. Nine away. 
Ball one. Tommy Hall's really got to be careful right now. Urban Munson leading off third base. Chambliss is at first. Ball one count on Nettles. With Elliott Maddox on deck. The situation here, Keeper, this is a very, very big, big, important part of winning the American League pennant right now. Strike one and one. If he can get out of this inning with only giving up one run with the bases loaded, it's a, it's a success. It's a win. It's a victory for Kansas City. And there you see the expression of pressure. Latell and Mendori in the Kansas City bullpen. And Case Hall is not able to handle the situation. One and one pitch. Get into left center field. It is going to drop for a base hit. Munson. Comes in from third, and the Yankees have the lead for the first time in a ball game at 4-3. Even then, Tom Hall was lucky because there would ordinarily have been men on first and third. Keith Chandler's had a hold up, even as the scoring runner had a hold up to see if that ball would be caught. Yes, and this may be the one time where we really notice the loss of Amos Otis, a Golden Glover, several years in the big leagues. The new position that Al Cowles is playing, normally a right fielder, has to hold up on the ball, doesn't have the usual perspective that he's used to. The ball drops, you can see that even Thurman Munson thought it might have been caught as he held up at third base before the ball dropped, before he started his run home. Whitey Herzog to the mound, Tom Hall leads. And so a fourth Kansas City pitcher will be summoned from the bullpen. Andy Hasler started. Looked very strong for a while, but the Yankees got to him. Marty Patton came in, pitched to one man. Now Tom Hall has yielded the go-ahead runs for the New York Yankees. We're at 4-3, and we've got a new pitcher coming. And now you have Steve Mingori on the mound for Kansas City. He pitched an inning to save the game on Sunday night in Kansas City. He's a left-hander who is deemed to pitch better against right-handers than left-handers because his principal pitch, according to the scouting reports, is the screwball. He has great motion. He's an exceptionally good field. So let's see what Mingari can do. And for those of you not knowledgeable, the screwball is a pitch that, if thrown by a left-hander, moves away from a right-handed hitter. In the whole history of baseball, the two best screwballers by reputation, and I guess by record, too, were first Gall Hubble and second Warren Spawn. Out at second base, it is Carlos May. Who hit for Pinella. And um, excuse me, uh, Chris Jambliss at second base and Greg Nettles at first base. Looking back over the inning, Roy White started it with a walk. Thurman Munson then doubled. Carlos May walked intentionally. Wiped out on the fielder's choice. Chambliss now is up at second base as a result of Greg Nettles' single. Two runs home for the Yankees, and they're trying to blow it open right here. As Whitey Herzog is using his pitching staff, trying to stop them. The batter now is Elliot Maddox facing Steve Mingori. And with one out, Mingori's first pitch, through ball, just misses outside. Got to make a comeback here right now, Keith. If they don't, then they're going to be psychologically down. Again, we've talked about the factor of the, the psychological aspect, the mental aspect. The crowd will be in the favor of the Yankees. They'll have some momentum gone, and the Royals will possibly be faced with having being down mentally. They've got to stop this rally. Shut it off as soon as possible. Two balls just outside. Two balls and no strikes to Elliott Maddox. Full count, three and two. Chambliss off second. Nettles off first. Pitch is headed to right center field. Yep. It's going to be in there for a base hit. Chambliss coming around third. He will score. Nettles goes to third and into second base. With a double. Elliott Maddox. And New York now leads 5-3. That'll be tough now. It let's Ellis get away with allowing a home run. Anytime you take a home run away, then definitely have a decided advantage in your ball club. They've now got to get a runner and they won't be able to tie the score unless they get a man on base and get a run, get a batter to the plate. Well, Frank's back in his seat. 
And he said that the Yankees were an explosive team, and that's just what happens here. That has happened here, and every tactical move that Whitey Herzog has made in this inning has worked against. He put in Tom Hall, and our scouting reports on Hall were exactly right. Hall is not a pitcher on the record that you can have much confidence in. Put him in because he was a left-hander against a left-handed hitter who chews up left-handers. Mark Littell coming in now is an interesting young man. We, we had him earlier on, and Reggie talked about the fact that he was brought in at a very young age and taught to be a relief pitcher. This is a young man who tries to pitch low to everybody, has a good fastball and a hard slide. We'll be back in just a moment. Do you have lyrics for that, Howard? <laughs> well, it's not the moon over Miami, Keith. It's the moon over Yankee Stadium. And it's a beautiful night and a beautiful sight. And so far, it's been a difficult time in this, the bottom half of the sixth inning for the Kansas City Royals. They broke swiftly, got three in the top of the first, and it looked like the Yankees had a hangover from their dreadful performance of last Sunday night. But they have inched back, scoring two in the fourth on a Chris Chambliss two-run home run. And now in the sixth, they still got a rally going. Three runs in, only one out, men on second and third. Batter Willie Randolph, the new reliever, a tough, good pitcher. Mark Littell, and here is Keith Jackson. Eight and four on the season with a 2.08 earned run average for this hard-throwing right-hander. And Reggie Jackson, as they say in the trade, this young man can really bring it. Yes, he can. One out. Strike. Nettles on third. Maddox on second. One out. Yankees with a couple of runs in. Lead five to three. The pitch is high and tight. One one count. One out. Caught in front of the plate. Foul. We had a squeeze play. One on one. One ball and two strikes with the infield in. You pull the infield in, and it makes a 256 hitter with runners on base. A 356 hitter with runners on base. Just a young fellow from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, now living in Kansas City. And in some trouble here. Time to stall the Yankees. Swing and a miss, and he got him. Looks like he got him with a high slider, Keith. But again, let's give Mark Littell credit. He's just a young kid, 21, 22 years old, and he went right after him. You're either going to get me or I'm going to get you. So now you've got two out with Greg Nettles over at third and Elliot Maddox at second. And the batter is Fred Stanley as Buck Martinez goes to the mound to talk with the young right-hander Mark Littell. He's 6'3", 210, 23 years of age. He's got to go after Fred Stanley right now because he's got the ever-dangerous Mickey Rivers on deck. Ball one, it's high. Well, he pops the glove of yes. Martinez with plenty of steam, but he's high with it. There's two he's, balls and no strikes. He's humping it up and giving it all he's got. Uh, he knows he's got to, they, the Royals have got to stay in this ball game. There is no tomorrow. We've got a game tomorrow, but you've got to let it all hang out. I guess you could say there is no next week unless you win the next couple of ball games. Two out of the next three. Almost hit it. Three balls and no strikes now as Fred Stanley takes a deep breath. Lucky to get away from that one. Ball comes in high and inside. He's overthrowing right now a little bit and not following all the way through. As you see, as you see, he's throwing ahead of his body, getting rid of the ball a little bit too quick, trying to throw too hard. He's almost got to lay this one right down the middle. You don't want to see Mr. Rivers at the plate. Lays it in. So the count is now three and one on Fred Stanley. He's got to lay this one in there, too, Keith. Well, he doesn't have to worry about a long ball. He doesn't have the most powerful hitter in the world to face, but he does have a kid who came through when most it mattered. From midsummer into the late going, at one point ballooned up to over 290, so he can hurt you. Well, we saw that Saturday. He got three hits. Right, he's four for seven in the series. Bottom of the order. High. All four bases are loaded again. The situation that comes from overthrowing a little bit, I know anybody that's been in baseball knows that he did not want to walk him to get to Mickey River. Well, I just don't want to do that. He asked the Philadelphia Phillies today. You get a guy that can run and so many things happen. There's just too many variables involved with Mickey Rivers at the plate. He can do it. 
do a lot of things, Howard. He can bunt, he can hit home runs, throwing the ball at 90 miles an hour, so he's still getting it up there pretty good. One and two now to Rivers. Runners edge off. Two out. High pop left side. Should be a play for Patek, the Kansas City shortstop. Ready makes it. And finally, the inning is over. And so the New York Yankees bat around. They score three runs as Kansas City goes halfway through the pitching staff. Hassner, Patton, Hall, Ben Gorey, and finally Mark Littell comes on to retire the Yankees. And so Hal McRae, Tom Poquette, and Frank White will be the three hitters to come to the plate for Kansas City as we move to the top of the seventh inning and the totals on the game for the Yankees five runs six hits and no errors for Kansas City three runs six hits and no errors. <laughs> Hal McCray Tom Poquette and Frank White now and he's the only Royal regular as you see who has not hit safely in the series. Hal came in 0 for 7 having walked tonight he's had a sacrifice fly and been hit by the pitcher. The New York Yankees leading by a score of 5-3 here in the top of the seventh inning. And McCray hits it high on the right side of the outfield and drifting over. Making the catch, Elliot Maddox. And there's one gone. We wondered how that man's going to pan out. Got a double, legged it in, got a hit a ball to right center, legged it into a double, showed us good speed, and it showed us some outstanding defense in right field. He so really got a big hit. The question mark is starting to leave. <laughs> it's not over yet, as you said. I'll tell you one thing, Doc Ellis had a long rest in the yes. bottom. <laughs> Absolutely. You wonder eight. how it's going to affect him. If they keep swinging at that first pitch, we'll never know. Good pitch right yes. there. Got a good slider still working for him. That's been his money pitch for the evening. Well, his experience, his poise as a veteran, enabled him to sustain after the first inning. He came right back. Tom Poquette. Pulls it down the right side, foul. And it's two strikes on Poquette as Sparky Lyle, left-hander, and Dick Tidrow, right-hander, warm up in the Yankee bullpen as New York leads by two. Right, and Martin will do that now. He doesn't want to dare let this one slip away. Any sign of weakening by Doc Ellis, and you'll have somebody else in there. No question about it. He gets a runner on, and you get a big hitter up there that can rock one in those seats, and Doc will say good night. I foul left side in the crowd out of play. Count over one two. He's not past Tom Poquette yet. I love this kid as a hitter. Reggie pointed out Sunday when Poquette was the big hitter for the Royals. How similar his stance is based upon Charlie Lowe's instructions to George Brett. And this kid is destined to have a great, great career. Doubled in the first inning off Doc Ellis. And struck out looking. One for two. Swing and a miss. Ellis strikes him out. Boquette leaves now with two gone and nobody on. There you see the picture of Doc Ellis right there warming up yeah. his hand. A guy I guess you could say that's been surrounded by controversy. I know I had a run in with him earlier this year. I got hit in the head. And I didn't know what the heck was going on. What was up or down. I was hot at him. I, the Pirates have been hot at him started the game in Cincinnati one day and hit the first five hitters. But I've got to say that when he's on the mound, when he's doing his job, he's one of the best. Now pinch hitting for Kansas City. A 15-year veteran. His name, Cookie Rojas. What a competitor. 37 years of age, native of Cuba. Doc Ellis working on Cookie. He provided a great deal of leadership for that ball club, Keith, when he played every day. And when he didn't play, just over the pitcher's glove, second baseman Randolph comes in, scoops and throws, and Kansas City is gone in order at the top of the seventh inning. And so, we reach the middle of the stretch inning with the New York Yankees holding a 5-3 lead over the Kansas City Royals in game number three of the American League Championship Series. Roy White switch hitting against Mark Littell looks at a fastball strike as the Yankees come up at the bottom of the seventh inning. It'll be Roy White, Thurman Munson, and Carlos May for New York. White struck out swinging, grounded a short, walked and scored a run. 
very much involved in fact triggered perhaps that New York explosion that resulted in three runs at the bottom of the sixth inning one and one now to count Cookie Rojas is now playing second base having pinch hit for Frank White high pop short center center fielder coming in and Al Collins calls and makes the catch for Kansas City there's one out. Here's the, here's the man who really got a big hit after White walked in the sixth. He shot a double into the right field corner. That really set up the three-run round. He, he was trying to do a couple of things right there. Howard is runner on first base, nobody out, making sure they'd advance the runner. Along with it, he got a base hit. But his primary job was to advance the runner. Wound up doing both. He's the official captain of the New York Yankees, the first captain since Lou Gehrig. So he's walking in some pretty dignified company right there. Swing and a miss for strike one. 186 hits in 1976. And let's make note of the fact that he caught 150 ball games or better. Latell, fastball, drill. Base hit for Thurman Munson. Don't ever throw that fastball inside to Thurman at that area. That's what makes a guy a good hitter. You go, Thurman hits the ball to right field. It seems like the guy that looks to hit the ball to right field, but you lull it. You He'll lull you to sleep, and all of a sudden you'll try to go inside because he went away Whoa, last man. time to right field. You pull, throw that ball in and zing. Reggie, I'm glad he'll he kill didn't you get it up on the in the low air. and inside pitch. He'll kill you. You just got to be thankful he didn't get it up in the air, Howard. Had it been higher, he would have hit it out. Carlos May now at the plate for New York. Designated hitter from the left side. Walked intentionally in that sixth inning outburst for the Yankees. And Littell is in with a fastball strike. High. Strike. One and two count as we look in from center field with Carlos May. Notice he's well up the bat handle. Lost a thumb in military service. Not have the power he once had. Got him. Struck him out with a blazing fastball thrown inside. Good pitch. Made a good pitch right there. He's a beauty. You talked about training men just to be relievers at a young age. We've had some of those. Remember Ed Raddatz of the Boston Red Sox? Dick Raddatz did a I mean, heck Dick, of a job. Yes, Dick, Tremendous of job. Mark Littell. In his second inning of work, they call him the country boy in Kansas City, and they really raise a ruckus when he comes in to pitch. <laughs> I noticed a little something out there in center field. Al Callens is playing Krista Pull, and he's a fellow that likes to hit the ball the other way. Get to the right side, into right field. Face hit. Munson takes the turn, heads to third. Roquette's throw into Rojas. Yankees have base runners at first and third. Not like I said. Chambliss is having a great series. He's seven out of 13. He has three runs batted in tonight. Just a steady, tough, solid ball player. He's got five runs batted in on the series. This at first. Munson at third. And your batter now, Greg Nettle, who has walked, struck out, swinging, and single. Two balls, no strikes to Nettles, and is fouled at the plate. And he is hurt. That's off the puppy, and that's the second time he's fouled the ball off his foot or ankle tonight. Oh, he's all right. That hurts. That really hurts. Uh, it's a little chilly out right now. Greg's feet, I'm sure, a little bit cold. And that right there does not help your puppies. It doesn't help the old feet, Cerizzi. The what? Feet. Cerizzi. Foots. Gene Monahan spraying <laughs> some of that uh, stuff on him to stop the hurting. You can see he's trying to pitch him inside what I call a danger area. You go in there and you miss four or five inches, and uh-oh, you've got a souvenir. 
You either got to admire Latell for going in there or call him not too bright for going in there. That's an area where you can get hurt. And he's going to go back outside. Fouled away. Mark Latell, the fifth pitcher for Kansas City. The 2 2 count, Chambliss running, pitches high. Bluff a throw, puts it over to third base. Thurman Munson back safely. In you know, a situation like that, the runner breaks from first base. The third base runner is supposed to go down and stand on the line like Thurman Munson did to try to block the view of the catcher. If the catcher throws through, then the runner will take off and try to make it home. That should be the. I think the first stolen base for the Yankees in the series. Right, and that should set up a walk situation. Because if I were they, I would pitch around Nettles. Then Elliot Maddox is due up, and then you would probably see Billy Martin go to Oscar Gamble, who's been a very good power hitter for the Yankees this year with 17 home runs. And they have hit the longest home run hit by any Yankee here in the stadium this year, as I suggested earlier on opening day when he hit one in the third deck in right field. But we'll have to see if they elect to pitch to Nettles. Base runners on second and third, 3 2 pitch to Nettles, yeah. over to the right side. John Mayberry will make the play himself. And so the Yankees score no run on two hits, and they lead two. And after seven, it is a 5 3 ball game, Yankees lead. We'll be back after this word from our local station. Looking down on Yankee Stadium from the ABC helicopter on an absolutely gorgeous October evening. And you see the game totals as they now stand as we move to the top of the eighth inning. And you're yeah. right, young men, the Yanks are indeed back, having won the Eastern Division and now fighting it out with the Kansas City Royals for the American League Championship. Freddy Patek will lead it off for Kansas City. Jamie Quirk will be a pinch hitter, and then we'll see about Jimmy Wolford. Patek bounds it down the third base line. Patek. One for two. Hits a shot. And Nettles at third. Greg handles it. Throws him out. We can get some indication of how, how Ellis is working. Munson had the target up. Here's a play here. Sticks in front of a ball. Ball. A hard smash. And then comes right back out with it. With a good throw. One down. And here's a new guy. Keith. Jamie Quirk from Whittier, California, 21 years of age. He was the best left-handed pinch hitter in 1976. He's rated in the book, at least, as the backup to George Brett at third, but they tell me he's a great athlete and can really probably play almost anywhere given time to work on it. Well, the problem was that he came up as a he came up as a shortstop. Originally, he was offered a scholarship to Notre Dame where they expected him to become the varsity quarterback and into baseball. And here he is. High foul, out of play. Two and one pitch to Quirk, foul right side, and the count goes two and two. I said he came up as a shortstop, Keith, which he did. He didn't have the range there. His best position, they felt, was third. But what are you going to do? Oh, we've got some noise in the stands. A squabble. Fan had a baseball, policeman had it, and there was a little <laughs> right. argument as to who was going to get it. I think the policeman probably wanted for a souvenir, too. Quirk strikes out on a low inside pitch. Now they're two gone, but nobody on for Kansas City in the eighth inning. It's a great comeback for Ellis right there because he knows that he may have been just a pitch away from leaving that ball game right there. He's almost got to be taken out of the ball game if he loses a runner. Now you see Billy telling him, how do you feel? Or coming out of the dugout here, he was going to ask him, how do you feel? What do you have left? Because I've got good fellows. There you see him say, Doc, say, I'm all right. I'm all right. Doc struck out five Royals tonight. Yeah, just reading the lift, you could see, see him say, I'm he not tired. In. Sure, he wants in. He allowed three hits in the first inning. He has only allowed two hits, three hits since. So he's been a commanding pitcher, drawing upon the reserve and the poise. Sure, he's got something to prove to because of the trade. Jim Wolford, the leadoff man, top of the order for Kansas City, and left fielder looks at a strike. He's 0 for 2. They were beginning to sour on him at mid-year, but he came 
There's the ball. He came back with seven straight victories at the tail end of the season. And we discussed whom we would have started in this game, Reggie. You remember, and you said, well, I think I'd have gone with Holtz, one of the best competitive pitches in contemporary baseball history. But today, Gabe Ball said, you've got to give this guy his due. Count now. Two and one. On Jim Wolford with two out, and they give him an enormous hole in left center field. So if he could pull it with something on it into that neighborhood, he could run all night. Look at the distance between the left fielder and the center fielder. The center fielder playing well over in right center, and it's now three and one to Doc, Wolford. Doc may be tiring right now. You see him doing a few things different than he's not usually doing now. He's stepping off the mound a little bit more in between pitches. He's raising his arm, breathing on his hand, reaching for a little extra. The pride of wanting to complete the ball game. There he loses the man, and we just might see Billy Martin again. Well, Doc Ellis walks Jim Wolford with two out. The Yankees leading 5-3. The batter will be Al Cowens, the center fielder for Kansas City. Al Cowens, not a particular home run threat. Only three on the year. Shot caught by Fred Stanley. So Al Cowan lines out to the shortstop Stanley. And Doc Ellis is able to contain the Kansas City Royals in the top of the eighth inning. So we've gone through seven and a half. The Yankees lead the Royals 5-3. Great plays and great games in championship series that bring out the best game. Bob Stinson is now catching for Kansas City. Mark Littell will face Elliott Maddox, Willie Randolph, and the Yankee shortstop Fred Stanley. Bottom third of the order in the home half of the eighth inning. And Littell, the fifth Kansas City pitcher, is high. But he's done a job. She has. He closed the door. He's done a job for him all year. Earned an average of 2.08. That's an outstanding ERA. Foul right side, upper deck. And tomorrow afternoon at three, we'll have game number four. If the Yankees hang on, then they could could conceivably lock it up, and they'll send Catfish Hunter out to do the job against Larry Gora for Kansas City. An unintentional swing tapped back to the pitcher, and Elliot Maddox is out, pitcher to first. Now Willie Randolph. Up the middle, base hit, Randolph, he's finally got one. What were you going to say, uh, Gracie? It's, it's never over. you got to play him one at a time, Howard. you got to play them one at a time. He'll pitch tomorrow, and then he'll have it, make a decision on who's going to open up the World Series Saturday. That's it's assuming the place. Yankees win tonight and Catfish would have win tomorrow, but that's a lot of assuming. they got a big, tough row to face in the ninth inning, the Yankees. Brett Stanley, Yankee shortstop, 0 for 2 of the ball game tonight. Randolph on first, Littell goes there, he's safe. Stanley came in to this particular ball game, having picked up four hits and seven trips in the first two. I don't believe that was a pitch out. If it was, Bob Stinson sure was late getting there. That oh, was a pitch out. Uh, that was a pitch out. I hope he's not that wild, but now's an opportune time to run, that's for sure, because very seldom in big league baseball will you see two pitch outs in a row. Randolph edging off. Here he goes. Throw. Not in time. Stolen. An outstanding jump on that ball right there. 37 steals. There you see him get a good jump. One takes a look. He takes a look at the catcher to see if the fella has swung at the bat, swung at the ball. And there you see him get under the, under the tag. I thought Excellent. he stumbled there. Reggie. Excellent base running right there by, by Willie Randolph Howard. If he takes a look and takes a glance, he knows if the batter has hit the ball. Therefore, he knows if it's a line drive or fly ball and can get back and get that one extra step. One and one the count on Stanley. Hits it out into short right center field. The right fielder coming in a hurry, and Oquette makes the catch. So now you've got two out as Randolph stays at second base. We've got Mr. Excitement coming to the plate. Mickey Rivers. Again in a big position. The Yankees trying to build as many insurance runs as possible. 
because George Brett leads off, then John Mayberry, then McRae, and then Bo Keck. Martin got a little annoyed with him at one point, thought he was making too much of his show. He was, however, productive when he played, wasn't he? Yes. One and one. Hit to the right side, Cookie Rojas. Throws him out. And so the Yankees are out in the bottom half of the eighth inning. They lead in the ball game 5 3 as we do next, top of the ninth. All right, we go to the top of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Kansas City Royals, and they'll be looking at left hander Sparky Lyle coming on in relief of Doc Ellis. Right. We commented on that. Inning ending line drive that was corralled by Fred Stanley. Look at Sparky Lyle's record. And Martin had had enough. He didn't want to risk Doc Ellis any further. Ellis with a truly fine performance. Giving up the three runs in the first and nothing thereafter in the next seven innings. The muscle men in the Kansas City batting order. George Brett, John Mayberry, Hal McRae. Brett two for three tonight. He brought in a left-hander right here, but... Here's a guy, George Brett, that's not affected by left-handers. He's also used to leading off innings. He's got a 391 on-base percentage leading off innings in 1976. And the big guy, Mayberry, is not affected either. Sparky Lyle's first pitch inside and high. One thing as a left-hander, for me, about facing Sparky Lyle is his main pitch was his slider pitch. He would go through an inning where he'd throw 25 pitches and throw 24 sliders. There's again, a, there's a fastball there. First pitch slider, second pitch fastball. Slider, slider, slider. That's his bread and butter pitch, and that's what he's going to see in this situation. He's I'll, thrown three pitches, I'll, all three high. I'll tell you, fellas, I have seen him do this consistently in the latter half of the season. He can get that tying run up there in a hurry, and he does. All right, George Brett, who had faced Sparky Lyle four at-bats during the regular season. No hits, but he had walked twice of it. Lyle throws four pitches, and George is on at first. Now the tying run comes to the plate in the person of a man I think, and I have felt all along from the very beginning, he could play a major role in this thing, and I don't mean to suggest that Big John Mayberry might jerk one out of here, but I'll tell you this, he's got the muscle. It's going to be tough for him, Keith. He's one for 19 versus Lyle in his career, and he's 0 for 18 in his last at bat versus Lyle. The first time up, he got a single off. He hasn't done anything since. Right. And there's the slider. And it's good for a strike. Ball is hit. He missed it. But it's not going to go very deep into right. As Elliot Maddox drifts in and makes the catch. In right field, and you've got one gone. With he Brett hanging on at first. He missed it, and he knew it. Felt like he should have hit that ball a lot better. Now it is the designated hitter, Hal McCray, for Kansas City, with one out and George Brett at first in the top of the ninth inning with the New York Yankees leading by a score of 5 3 and trying to get him to take a 2 to 1 lead in the series. You'll remember in the Sunday afternoon game when Catfish made his one mistaken pitch. It was to Mayberry. Reggie is on the inside half of the plate and uh, Mayberry hit under it as he did just then. Lyle is high to Hal McRae who is hitless in the series so far and if you believe in the law of average and you're a Kansas City partisan then you've got some emotion going for you as he fouls that one back into the crowd to make it a 1 1 count. Hit to right but playable. Elliot Maddox drifts over, makes the catch. So Maddox now with two foot out to the top of the ninth inning. And George Brett is still hanging around first base. Boquette is the scheduled hitter. You watch Catfish Hunter, and you played with him so many years. I just looked at him in the dugout. He may be the most placid looking performer I have ever seen. Look at him. Chewing, you'll see a bubble blown any minute. Well, we didn't expect that. <laughs> He's an emotion. Yes, absolutely implacable man. Tom Poquette will not hit. Billy Martin going to the mound to talk to Sparky Lyle. 
Out in the on-deck circle, swinging a bat, it is Dave Nelson, an infielder, a right-handed batter. As Whitey Herzog goes with the percentages, he sends a right-hander to the plate, Dave Nelson, instead of the left-handed hitter, Tom Poquette. Now, Nelson against New York had no hits against Sparky Lyle. Lyle walked him, and he scored a run. Well, there's not much of an omen in that message, is there? This is a gutsy guy who survived injury, has a tendency to reach for the ball. And the opposition pitches are instructed to make him do it. He handles high pitches best. He's capable of power. 235 batting average on the year. As Fred edges off and Sparky delivers, it is tapped, and it's fouled. Coming up on three hours for this baseball game, the Yankees are leading it five to three. Kansas City with two out, one on. As Nelson fouls it away and it goes upstairs. Sparky's way ahead in the count right now. No balls and two strikes, and I'm sure he'll go to his money pitch the slider. He'll be trying to make a good pitch on Davy Nelson here, trying to get that slider down and down in. and low. Trying That's to get it exactly down and in. what Billy told him. You can be sure of that. He's been victimized with too many high pitches for home runs. The two strike pitch with two out. That one's high. It's one and two. The ball's up, but it's completely out of the strike zone. Again, no balls and two strikes. You don't want to give a guy a good pitch to hit. Popped up on the right side. Chris Chambliss chases it, can't get it. It's in the crowd. There again is he's trying to make that the money pitch, the slider down and in. You're going to see it, so you might as well get ready for it, Davey. Sparky knows it, and everybody on both benches know it. You're in the big leagues for any amount of time. You know Sparky goes to his slider when he needs it. Pitchers of record. Doc Ellis to win it, Andy Haskell to lose it. Sparky Lyle trying to save it right now for New York. Fouled off again. Scheduled pitchers for tomorrow afternoon's ball game at 3 p.m. Eastern Time here on ABC. Larry Gura, left-hander, Kansas City. Catfish Hunter, right-hander for the Yankees. Red Edge is off first. Nelson fouls it down the right side. Now you see George Brett. He walked to lead the inning. And he's frustrated. He's watched two men hit fly balls to right field. So you'll be with Tennessee against Alabama Saturday afternoon, Keith. Monday night, I'll be in Foxborough, Massachusetts, the surprising Patriots against the suddenly reviving New York Jets. But this is top of the ninth in the score. Five to three Yankees. George Brett on first. One ball, two strikes on Davey Nelson. And Keith, let's see what happens. Well, they're playing a little cat and mouse game with Nelson stepping in, stepping out. You see Munson making sure that Sparky keeps the ball down on the ground. He's getting right down with it. Fouled again. Down the right side. So Nelson has not been able to get around at all on Lyle. All of the foul balls have been off on the right side. I don't think Sparky has to put that much of the ball in the strike zone. That ball is in the hitting area right there. I believe Thurman is getting down on his knees trying to make sure that Sparky keeps the ball down and out of the home run area. Nelson doesn't hit many, but he's capable. At one this season. Hit toward the shortstop, Stanley. Goes to the second baseman, Randolph, and the ball game is over. And the New York Yankees have taken a 2-1 to one lead in the American League Championship Series. As they defeat the Kansas City Royals tonight by a score of five to three, with Doc Ellis getting the win and the Hassler taking the loss, and so the record crowd at New Yankee Stadium go home happy as the Yankees win the ball game five three five runs nine hits no errors Kansas City three runs six hits and no errors back after this message from our local station. <laughs> 